so this caprylic acid as i said it's a medium chain fatty acid and like a saturated fatty acid why i am so interested into this compound is it's because of its antimicrobial property so it is proven for its like antimicrobial property against like a broad spectrum of pathogens uh which are definitely one of the major concerns in our poultry industry because of the food recalls contaminations all those issues Hello everyone, welcome to another episode of the Poultry Nutrition Black Belt podcast where we bring you the latest in poultry nutrition industry and research trends in approximately 10 minutes. My name is Sam Rochel. I'm a co-host of the show and an associate professor of poultry nutrition at Auburn University. Uh, and I look forward to discussing with one of my colleagues today uh, in our department, uh, Dr. Shijina Raj, who's uh, been here for uh, maybe a year or so, uh, kind of working in the areas of uh, pre and post harvest uh, food safety. And so look forward to hear about uh, some of the work that, that you've been doing. So thank you, Shijina, for joining. Thanks, Dr. Roshir. Thank you so much for a kind introduction. And thank you so much for hosting this podcast. Yeah, absolutely. No, I enjoy it. It's always good to talk with different people and learn about different projects going on. So uh, before we get into your, the, the topic of the discussion today, can you just give us a little bit about your, your research background and your current role here at Auburn? So regarding my educational background, uh, I completed my DVM from Kerala Veterinary and Animal Sciences University, India. Then I worked as a research assistant there in a university poultry and like duck farm. Uh, and then I moved to University of Minnesota for my master's and PhD program. And I was with uh, under the guidance of Dr. Anup Kolanur Johnny. He was my major advisor for both master's and PhD program. And then I moved to Auburn for my postdoctoral fellowship program with Dr. Diana Barossa. So in all this period, my master's, PhD, and postdoc period, uh, I was doing uh, research on food safety and interventions. So basically what I'm doing is I am uh, trying to find out different antibiotic alternatives uh, to implement in poultry production system against major foodborne pathogens like Salmonella and Campylobacter. So that's the overall goal of my research. And I tested like several categories of interventions like essential oils, fatty acids, probiotics, vaccines. And we currently finished a study on fat sources. Yep. So I'm doing both pre and post harvest intervention studies. So today maybe we can discuss more about a study that I have like uh, conducted during my master's program. Yes, that'd be great. Yeah, no, this is a very hot topic. You know, there's a lot of people that, uh, you know, are interested, particularly in salmonella with the evolving regulations and the framework. So certainly a, a critical area that you're working in. But yeah, you, so you're, you, you've you done some work, uh, particularly in your master's with, with caprylic acid. So can you talk a little bit about what that is and, and what that project looked like? Yeah, sure. Uh, so basically, uh, uh, this project uh, I did for my master's uh, thesis and the entire thesis is out now for, from like UMN library. Uh, it's, it's like it has public access now. And also one of uh, its chapters is like uh, got published in Poultry Science. Uh, so maybe we can discuss. And I also got chance to like uh, present this data in like different conferences like Poultry Science Association annual meetings and uh, Minnesota Nutrition Conferences. Uh, but it's great to like talk with the research that we have already done and disseminate it to like more people. That's always like a great activity being a researcher and academician. So I'm happy to like talk more about this. So coming to your question, what is caprylic acid? So as you all know, it's like a fatty acid and fatty acids are like kind of categorized based on their structure, the number of carbons in their structure. So with that classification, caprylic acid belonging to medium chain fatty acid category. Um, other fatty acids belonging to this category are capric acid, caproic acid, so this caprylic acid 
as i said it's a medium chain fatty acid and like a saturated fatty acid why i am so interested into this compound is it's because of its antimicrobial property so it is proven for its like antimicrobial property against like a broad spectrum of pathogens uh which are definitely one of the major concerns in our poultry industry because of the food recalls contaminations all those issues so that's why i am interested in this compound and it is a grass status compound it's generally recognized as safe status compound to use as a feed additive in animal production so this caprylic acid is naturally found in many compounds like coconut oil coconut milk mm-hmm. bovine milk and human milk okay so it has its natural presence in lot of compounds mm-hmm. so in my research i tested this compound in both pre harvest application as well as post harvest application against salmonella yeah very good So in in uh the pre-harvest uh, application was this applied in the water or in the feed or did you look at both So basically in my study we supplemented this compound uh through feed as a feed additive Okay So it was 1% caprylic acid supplementation through feed throughout the study period So we okay. conducted this study uh for 5 weeks in broiler chicks So started from day 0 to f- week 5 we continuously supplemented this compound through feed and tested the efficacy against salmonella heidelberg uh, which was like a multi drug resistant uh, mm-hmm. and uh, outbreak strain uh, so we inoculated these broiler chickens with salmonella heidelberg and efficacy of caprylic acid was tested after a week of Uh, inoculation okay so did you see some impacts for the in feed application yes so what we found is uh, actually this continuous supplementation of caprylic acid through feed uh, significantly uh, lowered the bacterial count we recovered from the cecum of uh, birds okay very good and in addition to that uh, and another research group actually a research group from university of connecticut so my major advisor dr anup kolanur joni was working there and he conducted some of similar studies using caprylic acid in broilers and he found that uh, it can be implemented like two different ways either like a prophylactic supplementation what does it mean uh, so if we are supplementing this compound before the salmonella challenge and if you are going for a therapeutic supplementation that means we are supplementing the compound after the bacterial right, challenge right, yeah. so in both these case it can cause like a huge impact in reducing salmonella counts from different parts of avian gut including crop intestine cecum and cloaca they okay. also found that uh the supplementation of caprylic acid can reduce salmonella dissemination into liver and spleen mm. without causing any impact on production performance right without lowering final body weight as well as overall feed intake okay so that's what they found in their research Yeah, very good. And that was um similar uh doses or inclusion levels when used like prophylactically versus a therapeutic additive. Yeah, so what they did is they tried two different doses, 0.7 percentage and 1 percentage. Okay. And when they looked at the results, both have significant uh like reduction of salmonella in both these concentrations. But of course, 1 percentage caprylic acid uh gives like the mag- higher magnitude of reduction when we talking about bacterial numbers okay so there is a dose response to the yes. to the impact yeah okay very good and so you've also looked at this as a post harvest too is that through like uh basically a, a, a immersion or simulating adding it to the the chiller or what what intervention step would this be applied yeah so basically when we thinking about its uh, applications in post harvest side uh so being like a researcher like in working in different antimicrobial intervention our primary focus is mostly uh, going towards like chilling application or post gel tip treatment and packaging 
so that's yep. like towards the end point of like our processing side but when coming to choose caprylic acid as a processing aid the major difficulty that we faced because of its freezing point mm. so at chilling condition this compound get freezed and oh, we wow. couldn't okay. like yeah uh, find out like a method to stop freezing and making it antimicrobial effective so we decided to choose an another very important critical control point of processing which is scalding Mm. so in most cases antimicrobials are not like um, highly like recommending or testing at this stage because of uh, several reasons and the major reason is the organic content coming into the scalding right. tank right. because mm. it's coming at the earlier stage of processing with all the feathers and fecal materials coming through the processing line so it is highly um organic rich the scalding mm-hmm. water so it is very hard to exert the antimicrobial efficacies of compounds at this stage mm. but yeah. what we found is caprylic acid could exert a really good antimicrobial efficacy even in the presence of high organic content mm. so neat. we decided to choose caprylic acid interventions at scalding stage mm. and okay. we found that caprylic acid can significantly like reduce the bacterial number we tested mm-hmm. salmonella heidelberg on chicken carcasses so in this this was a simulated study so okay. we conducted this study by simulating the temperature time combination of scalding in our like lab um setup and yep. then uh, we used a drumstick sample instead of whole carcasses to simulate the study and we found that a significant reduction in salmonella heidelberg number after this dip in caprylic acid added scalding waters very good so then the next question has have you tested the combination where you had it both pre harvest and post harvest i didn't get a chance to test like a combination study with pre and post harvest but the other approach i uh, tested as we are thinking about the combination Uh, I got a chance to test caprylic acid in combination with a commonly used antimicrobial parasitic acid. Sure. Yeah. Okay. In scalding condition, uh, but we couldn't find any like additive effect with these two compounds. As you know, not all chemicals, when even if they have individual antimicrobial properties, when it is combining, we may not get the sure, same effect. Sure. So right. that synergetic effect we couldn't find with. Uh, caprylic acid and parasitic acid combination mm-hmm. but regarding the post harvest study the very important finding um i would want to highlight is the bacterial count in scalding water so okay. what we find is after adding caprylic acid into scalding water we got complete reduction of salmonella from the scalding water even enrichment negative samples so wow. enrichment wow. is one of the method um, in microbiology technique we used to find or maximize the detection limit of salmonella so what we are finding trying to do is even the presence of single cells of salmonella is the we are trying to enrich it and maximize its detection in the culture and plating methods So what we found is complete reduction of salmonella from scalding water. Wow. This wow. has That like is. really huge impact because sure. this scalding water is act as a major source of cross contamination for upcoming carcasses in the processing line. Absolutely. Now that's a that's a very exciting finding and again very very timely right with uh, a lot of interest in this this area over the last years and I'm sure in the in the years to come. So Ready for more sustainable poultry production? New data suggests that decreasing bacterial loads in feed using Termin 8 supports entric health, leading to improved performance. Gut health is more than a gut instinct. Learn more today at www.anatox.com. Very exciting. So what about uh future studies? Where do you think this needs to go from here? Yeah, I can see some of the uh, literatures recently published with the use of uh, caprylic acid um, in combination with other antimicrobials for eggs safety, microbiological safety of eggs, 
and also wow. in packaging applications yeah. so there are a lot of study going on with uh, exploring caprylic acid in the post harvest side in both egg as well as meat product side mm-hmm. uh, but i really want to focus more on pre harvest side as well uh, because we already know that it's working against salmonella and multiple other uh, bacterial pathogenic bacteria mm-hmm. uh, but at the same time i'm curious to know how it affect the host side like gut health of birds right right and overall immunity of birds how it impact the cecal metabolites metabolic mm-hmm. pathways yeah yeah with like a host perspective sure yeah now i think that uh, that makes a lot of sense and we know in general the medium chain triglycerides certainly have a a wide variety of effects both on the host and the and the microbes so uh, great work really appreciate you sharing that with us and and i'm sure there are many in the audience who will uh that will certainly uh, spark some ideas about uh, interventions and, and things to, to potentially look at. So, so really, thank you for your work on this, Dr. Shajina. Thank you so much, Dr. Rochelle, spending time on working with this podcast and for the entire team, like setting up the podcast time and coordinating with the um, like speakers. You are you are putting like a lot of effort for like. for like a really good job like disseminating our work or research happening in the academia to like a wider audience i truly appreciate that hard work and effort yeah well hey thanks i enjoyed the conversation really appreciate that that feedback so with that that'll conclude another episode of the poultry nutrition black belt podcast uh, presented to you by wisenetics uh, thanks for joining us and don't forget to subscribe and and uh, catch the future episodes and Uh, certainly we would appreciate our audience to leave any feedback such as that uh, as well so please uh, take the time to do that if you enjoyed today's episode uh, until next time this is Sam Rochel signing off thank you hey everyone we're always searching for the latest and greatest research to share each week and if you have a poultry nutrition related research trial and would like to come on the show and talk about it and share it with us feel free to email the research link uh, the paper where we can find it or the abstract to hello at wisenetics.com. That's hello at wisenetics.com. And I look forward to hearing from you.